We're here to close out the third episode in the last chapter of our divorce series. I brought on my good friend, Dr. Gabriela Sardinas to join me. Gabby, thank you for agreeing to come on and talk about this really personal subject. talk about your experience not about being a kid growing up in a divorce household that we both can talk about but about why you reached out to me and explain what, what we just did what we just did for you our process so um luckily victor and i have a very long-standing relationship and he uh, sold us our home um which was a wonderful experience to begin with and um when my uh, now ex-husband and I decided to separate. Um, we both knew that we wanted to make it as easy a transition as possible for our children because coming from a divorced family, you know that that's, that's the priority. Um, and it's an amicable uh, separation. So uh, we agreed that the first step was to attack and sell the house immediately, um, given the market and given the complexities that come with a divorce and assets so actually the most natural thing was to call you and immediately have you come over and, and start the process for us I honestly was on vacation and absolutely shocked when I got the call I was in the Bahamas uh, but I hopped on it I, I, I we spoke the following day the next morning and I gotta give it to you uh, what you guys did it blows my mind because without even consulting me you made a very wise decision and it's something that I would recommend to everyone watching if you, you know you're gonna get and a divorce is inevitable one of the most important things you need to be talking about is the division of the marital asset and the marital home and by moving forward in the way that you did and having us sell that home in record time and put it out there in the market that we were you achieved one of the most amazing results I think we probably sold it for the highest price per square foot in your neighborhood in, in, in a really short amount of time and one of the reasons we achieved that is because the other side had no idea you were going through a divorce it's something that I having experienced it I can go through a house and I'll see a house and I can identify almost right away if a couple splitting and I know I have that leverage on the other side that I can press if I need to push the time well, <laughs> absolutely and in, in our case what we did was, you know, you wanted to get a number and I told you, yeah, I don't think I can get there. But to get there, you gotta trust me and let me list it there. And in other words, we were listing it at or below market, which is what we did with yours. Mm -hmm. And you trusted me and the net result was like $52,000 above ask price. Now I can say it, it's close. And it was spectacular to see because the, the trust in me and allowing the other side to get into a crazy bid war is what got you the results you got. And the fact that they didn't know or haven't even depressed on is important. And so what I can impress upon people is that one of the most important things, if you know it's coming and you can deal with it as, as adults about splitting that asset, is to move forward with this process before the other side knows you're being part of a forced sale. Because most people, if you can't agree and it's this battle and this war, the only ones who really end up winning are the lawyers. And that equity that you would have had there or otherwise had some say or control regarding selling the property, you may be, you know, there based on a court order. You may be with some realtor that you don't know. We don't know what he's doing. Uh, that got appointed out of a wheel by a judge because you guys couldn't agree on someone who was a professional to come in and do the work right. Uh, so I impress upon all of those who may be thinking about getting a divorce. Obviously, like we said in the other episodes, to get advice from competent counsel, but also to reach out to uh, an experienced real estate professional to give you advice about. The process, how it would work, and what you could possibly get at the end of the day before you embark on the process. Mm -hmm. Besides that, can you give them a little bit of color regarding how how Kato and I handled it, just so that people know how, how we went about it, so as to not disrupt your very busy life, your residency that was going on, and your kids. So, without a doubt, um, I think that the biggest factor is at the trust level that we have. Um, not only personally but professionally because you had sold us that same home so you guys were familiar with the home i think that helps yeah it definitely helped you because were very 
familiar with the home. She know? actually got the home without it hitting the market. It was one of these situations where the market was crazy and we presented it to her and, and we were able to get her and her ex-husband in to this home before it even hit the market. So, you know, dealing with people that know what they're doing and trading it can make you these things as well. So they were thankful enough to call us back. Yes, of course. So we had a good experience with you. We trusted you. Um, because of the things that you mentioned that can happen when you're selling a property with divorce so disagreements amongst couples of what's the number that we want how long are we going to list it when are we going to throw in the towel um that can make the process very complex if the other side is pressuring so we both agreed that we would trust you and we would trust your guidance instead of going into a marital argument um, and, and disagreeing with, with all of those different variables, we we put it in, in your court. And you and, and Gato, without a doubt, you know, you had flexibility with our schedules. I trusted you to come into my home, obviously. Yeah, <laughs> we no. know each other, so no, but for, the door was unlocked, but that, that creates a, 100%. a we, difference. We, we took care of the dogs, we made yeah. sure it happened and the showings happened while the kids weren't there. It's something that I like to disrupt the, the families as least as possible, especially when there's kids involved and they don't have to see it. You know, there's a lot of ways to structure the way that you show the house, the way that you present it without disrupting one's life. And if you do it right, uh, the other side's not gonna even know a divorce is happening, which is huge when it comes down to having the leverage to sell a house. So uh, if you're gonna go on the, you know, have, unfortunately this is part of life and, and, and it's you in this situation, uh, don't hesitate to reach out, shoot me an email, give us a call, and we're happy to sit down with you and explore your options. You know, it may it may be it may not be selling. It may be that one party wants to keep the house and the other party's okay with it. And all you need is a competent person to value it if you agree on a neutral to do so, or you get yourself an appraiser and have a neutral appraiser appraise the value and the other side, you know, takes out the equity. Uh, Rick gets a new loan, signs it over, and it's part of the agreement. But you know, we can also put you in touch with uh, competent counsel to be able to help you with that process. And uh, if I'm here, I, I honest to God will, having sat in your shoes, uh, understand the process and we're happy, happy to help you all. So again, Gabby, thank you for joining us. No, thank you. I really appreciate it. I know it's a little personal subject. So Albert, how did you and Gabriela come to the decision to give me the call to sell this house? So first of all, because we trusted you, um, I mean, I trust you blindly. We've known each other for what, 20, 20 years, maybe more? You're aging. I mean, <laughs> um, and so not only just the trust and the, uh, the friendship that we've, that we've had, but I knew that the house was going to be in, in great hands when it came to, to making the, sa uh, the sale. Um, I've watched you closely over the last year or so, and you're, you've been doing a great job in the, with, with the market. Um, we wanted to get the most out of it, and we both knew that that you were up for for the task. This is completely aside from the friendship and the you know brotherhood that we have and, and all of that. So, and, and and thank you for that. And one of the things, I mean, you guys caught me by surprise when you called me in the Bahamas and said, "Hey, I need to see you right now." I, I was I was in utter shock and. Uh, when I finally got back, we, we got down to it, but I think what you guys did, and I, and I mentioned it when I was talking with Gabriela, was genius. It was brilliant having the maturity to make this important financial decision, knowing that the marriage was, you know, irretrievably broken and that you guys had to do this to, you know, either sell it or one was going to have to buy the other out and getting onto this before even moving forward to the next steps. And uh, I'm glad you guys reached out. Uh, I, I hope that I help navigate this process both on this front and on the other. I know I refuse to help you guys and become the attorney on the divorce because I don't want to wear two hats. It's something, although I can do it, it's something that I, I, I chose to help my friends in another capacity where they both agreed to use me. And uh, there's no sense in wearing four different hats at once. And, mm -hmm. and so I, 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 as much as I gave you guidance and, and what you guys should do, I, I, on, I only chose to help you guys and represent you on the sales. So, Again, thank you for putting your trust in me. Thank you for coming on the show and talking about this uh, really difficult subject. And don't forget to move Miami. <laughs>